Happy New Year to to everyone. Uh, I should say that the title page uh, here should be updated to Advancing Copper Discoveries. Uh, so uh, we've got two now, I think, in in this uh, in our main project area, the uh, in the Iberian Pirate Bowl. Uh, just just a quick uh, recap about uh, what I think are the sort of main attributes for for Pan Global at the moment. You, we have uh, we have an advanced copper project. Uh, in southern Spain, the Iberian Pirate Belt, as many of you know. Uh, and we have a new discovery. Uh, this is in a tier one location. You know, it's a very favorable mining, generally mining friendly area where there's a great track record of converting exploration success into mines. So we, I think we are uniquely positioned here with what we've got to uh, potentially uh, have something that could be in production when copper prices are expected to really escalate uh, um, to meet the sort of this uh, growing demand that people are forecasting. So um, add to that, we've uh, we've got, grown, got a, a great exploration pipeline, uh, lots of potential to make additional discoveries. <clears throat> so I think uh, I'll just, I'll skip over this part, but um, the, the main, I, I guess, uh, things I'd like to cover today are, I guess, threefold. Uh, firstly, just a, a quick recap on last year's achievements. Uh, secondly, uh, the recent results that were reported uh, this week and the significance of those. And then thirdly, just very quickly on our plans for, for the remainder of 2024. So um, hopefully uh, uh, that'll leave plenty of time for Q and A's after that. So. So as uh, many of you know, we during uh, we've got uh, the two discoveries, Canyada Hon and La, La Romana. But uh, this year we completed about five uh, fifteen thousand three hundred meters of drilling, about sixty two drill holes. Uh, we have expanded the La Romana discovery by about another twenty five percent. So quite a significant uh, increase in the size of that. The mineralization now extends about one point four kilometers very continuous, that same simple geometry has just been is continued. Um, we've also, as I say, made a, a new discovery with uh, where we've now reported eight drill holes at uh, the Kenyatta Honda discovery in the north. And uh, we've also reported during the year, uh, last year, the metallurg first uh, lock cycle copper metallurgy test work, which was very significant in the sense that it showed um, high concentrate grades, uh, excellent recoveries, no deleterious uh, minerals, um, low energy uh, uh, for crushing, et cetera, given it's a coarser material than what uh, most of the other mines are, are dealing with. But overall, you know, very favorable attributes and the, the sort of thing, uh, metallurgy that the other mines with copper would, would like to have. So really good results. Um, and we're just waiting for the uh, tin and, and uh, some other test, test work as well, which will come this year. Um, yeah, in addition, uh, you know, we've also did a, a lot of exploration work on the, on the prop, the Esker Centre project this year. Uh, extensive detailed geophysics and geochemistry, geological mapping, etc. So that work has also uh, significantly uh, enhanced and added to our our uh, target pipeline. So uh, I think we've uh, we've got potential to make ad additional discoveries, and I think the results we've we've got it we've had at Kenyatta Honda a further verification that our uh, exploration methodology is working uh, working very effectively. So I think with the number and quality of ta new targets we've got, uh, the potential to make uh, uh, additional discoveries in the in the, the next uh, couple of years it looks very good indeed. Uh, this uh, just sort of highlights that uh, you know we've we've been it shows the two gravity anomalies we're testing at the moment at La, at La Romana and Kenyatta Honda, but we have many other of uh, these uh, geophysics targets in the property. Um, in particular, uh, you noticed the Bravo target, which we hope to get access to this to to um, this year. So overall, we had a very successful year in twenty twenty three, despite a very difficult market. 
we uh, raised about six million near the at the end of October. So we're funded uh, through for for this year. Um, and we, I think the other significant point to note, we, we brought on a new board member, Corinne Smith, who brings a lot of sort of metal marketing background and so on, other experience, uh, and Corinne's from, with uh, Newmont. So, so I think we're very well set for a, for a good 2024. So just um, if I move on to some of the, the, the new exploration results and the news we put out this week. So starting with the last news release first, um, we reported the, uh, well, first of all, we completed about seven holes last year that we, and we hit copper in every hole. Uh, we announced a, or commenced a 11-hole 11, 11 program, follow-up program in November last year, uh, and we reported the results for the first of those follow-up holes uh, just yesterday morning, um, and we, it, which included hole number eight. It had two intervals, uh, uh, eight metres of uh, about 2.65 grams gold, a uh, bit of copper, uh, followed by a further interval of about uh, 6.8 metres at 1.5% copper and, and 0.7 grams gold. So um, these are some of the highest grades we've seen in the in the property, uh, In sorry, in this, uh, this target. Very early days, but this is already indicating uh, grade potential uh, all grades and widths. Uh, in this very wide space drilling with, that we've done at the moment. So we have another two holes yet to report and uh, about another eight holes uh, planned for uh, follow as follow-up in this, uh, in this uh, target. And this just shows the latest latest results. So there's two, uh, two very close uh, intervals here and this a very good coincident with the geophysics. So as I say, the We've been testing largely geophysics targets with the wide space drilling at this stage, uh, and that's been very effective. And importantly, we've got, as I showed on the previous slide, we have a, a over two kilometre long gravity target. So uh, we've shown already with this drilling that some of the, the big, better thicknesses and grades coincide with this gravity anomaly. So uh, at this stage, all of this remains essentially untested. So uh, part of the follow-up program uh, that we've got underway at the moment, we'll look to step out along this target and see if it it's extends. But if it does, this is, you know, this this is a very large target. Um, you know, really uh, could be could be a, a significant discovery if uh, if this continues. Uh, the the other news release uh, that we put out uh, on Monday this week uh, included. Uh, nine holes, so part of a sort of 25 to 30 hole program that we had planned on the western extension of the La Ramana discovery. Uh, these, so uh, we've now completed 20 holes on that uh, that follow up uh, program, extension drilling program, if you like. And uh, these results were very significant, I think, in the sense it looks like we've identified a, another high grade lens off in the northwest, coincident with a uh, with the gravity anomaly and also with a downhole electromagnetics uh, geophysics target. So uh, the mineralization is very much open in that direction. Um, so uh, with, with the drilling, we'll, we'll uh, continue later this year. We'll look to extend that even further. So uh, those those results were pretty significant. I, I should note that we uh, holes like uh, holes one seven three with nine point seven meters. At about 1.7% copper equivalent, uh, you know, nice grade, not very deep, and uh, we had another hole uh, in this 20 holes that we've, we've completed in the west, included 15.9 uh, uh, meters of, of also about one and a half percent copper as well. So, yeah, great results. La Romana is continuing that same simple geometry, uh, you know, very ideally uh, ideal for an open pit. You know, comes to surface in the south. Uh, dips away to the north, um, you know, and the drilling so far has continued to try and is favouring drilling the shallow western extensions rather than chase the, the mineralisation uh, at depth. And obviously there's a an economic rationale for, for doing that rather than going deeper at this, at this point. So great results, still going, still growing, 1.4 kilometres long now, 180 holes completed. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a pretty good uh, looking project at this stage. All right, so this just shows some of the, that simple geometry that's continued uh, 
this is the westernmost section uh, showing some of that high the high grades that we reported uh, uh, just uh, yesterday. Uh, sorry, uh, Monday this week with the, the mineralization currents and with a downhole EM conductor plate open at depth comes all the way to surface. It's an old uh, Roman mine working um, as well, so it might continue. So the the hope is that uh, this will continue to grow. And uh, you can see another cross section here, that 15.9 meters of of about uh, uh, over a percent copper here as well. So, so overall, with with Lara Mata, if you were to uh, put a checklist together of those things you'd want for a for a mine, I think we we tick a lot of those boxes already. It's very simple geometry, great metallurgy. Um, it's uh, uh, you know in a great jurisdiction. Um, all of those, all of those things combined to make this look a, a, like a, a pretty attractive uh, project and, and somewhat unique, given that we have the potential to put this into production uh, quite uh, within the, the next five to ten years, when copper prices are expected to be uh, screaming. All right, so uh, if I could just move on to the uh, for the plan for this year, uh, we've uh, we've designed a plan and budget for to take us right through to 2025 with the funds we have available. Uh, that's going to include about a sort of three to four thousand meters of drilling, uh, mainly focused on on the well on the two discoveries uh, extend, delineating the western extension of La Ramana and uh, further testing the, the potential for Kenyatta Honda to ex to expand. So those are the two, I guess main objectives of the drilling at this stage. Uh, should the results that uh, should uh, depending on how the results go at La Romana, if it continues, then we'll obviously look, look at further drilling there. Um, and the same goes at Kenyatta Honda. But uh, we'll look, we have the potential to put out a uh, our first mineral resource estimate for La Romana, perhaps the second half of this year. But that will really be subject to how the drilling progresses on that west extension. If it continues, then we'll we'll hold off from putting out a resource. It might also we might also decide to uh, see how things to, uh, progress at Kenyatta Honda. Yeah, we recognise the the potential, the, the significance of Kenyatta Honda is that uh, you know you have one deposit, you find another that could be part of a, the same mining complex. Um, so uh, and that's where we really can create significant value for the shareholders. And so I think those are the those are the main objectives. The the other thing to look forward to is the uh, tin metallurgy results, which uh, the first of those we expect to uh, report within the next, say the next six weeks or thereabouts. Uh, we've also have some uh, what they call uh, vari variability tests, where, where we test the the flow sheet developed from the earlier metallurgic work across the diff the deposit, just to see if we need to adjust the the uh, the way that the ore is treated. Uh, across in different parts of the ore body. So uh, we'll have those uh, first of those results out as well, you know, within the next uh, sort of six, to, six weeks to two months. So, uh, and then the only, the other thing we intend to do is continue to advance the, the other uh, exploration targets we've got, have those drill ready, but more particularly, there's a, a very high priority target called Bravo, very prominent gravity anomaly. Uh, we hope to have access to that secured uh, in the in the first quarter this year, but perhaps uh, certainly within the six the first six months. Uh, it's not a question of if, but just a question of when. So, so I think that probably uh, will wrap things up, and I'll I'll, st I'll uh, take any questions. And over to you, Jason. Perhaps. Yeah, that's great, Tim. Uh, thank you very much for the overview of that. Um, we'll probably, uh, with some of the questions we've received uh, prior to the call today, uh, we'll dive a little bit deeper into some of the areas, uh, and then um, uh, then uh, we'll turn it back to you. So again, uh, you had just talked about the tin metallurgy. So one of the one of the questions we'd had in advance was when will the tin metallurgy testing be completed? Um, I think you just said it was about six weeks from now. Yeah, it could be sooner. Uh, so we were expecting uh, uh, a report uh, from the uh, the company doing the the metallurgy work, perhaps at the end of this week. But I haven't seen anything yet. But uh, we'll need a, a little bit of time to go through that. But it's not far away. So uh, great. We'll 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 have that out just as soon as we've we've uh, we've gone through it and understand the results. And but I, I suffice to say, at this stage, we're very encouraged with the feedback from the metallurgists at this stage. Uh, it looks like the Tin, uh, which is all uh, occurring as cassiterite, 
which is the best, the ideal mineral for metallurgical extraction. Uh, but it looks like it's very amenable to gravity separation. So uh, that's very good news because that's a potential low cost uh, addition to the uh, processing flow sheet. So, uh, and the recoveries look quite good as well. So, uh, yeah, very encouraging at this, at this early stage. But that, uh, I should say, the significance of that is, of course, the tin, yeah, at this stage looks about 15 to 20 percent of the in situ value. Um, so yeah, it could make a real me meaningful contribution to the to the economics of this uh, this discovery. That's great. It, well, it sounds it sounds like um, it, in our case, at least at La Romana, that uh, it's not a, a science experiment the way it is with uh, a lot of deposits out there where you're going to have to do a lot of complex processing. So that's that's a positive for investors. Um, yeah. uh, next question: uh, Do you have any idea when you will get access to the private land east of La Ramada? So, talking about the Bravo target, obviously. Yeah. Uh, look, we we uh, we thought we'd get it last year. Uh, we we got a, a resolution from the government, uh, in fact, essentially what they call a temporary occupation order. But they had a uh, there was an error in in, in the uh, paperwork, so it's had to go back to them. Um, so hopefully. Uh, that will get the uh, renewed uh, resolution from the from the government uh, quite soon, and we can. Uh, that, that's usually the catalyst for you know, concluding an, uh, an agreement, an access agreement with the landowners. So, yeah, you know, that's been our experience with 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 other areas. Um, it's the only area now that we don't have access to. And just to remind people, we have over ninety access agreements. Uh, at this stage, so yeah, this is just one one la one uh, one area that we're waiting on. But look, we're not short of places to drill. Uh, we've got plenty of other targets to go to in the meantime. But yes, the Bravo target is is clearly a, a very attractive um, uh, geophysics feature. Yeah, great. Um, uh, next question from an investor: uh, For people who may not understand the significance, what is the big picture meaning of the Kenyatta Honda news release uh, from yesterday, and what makes hole number eight so encouraging? Yeah, well, uh, so first of all, those grades were yeah you know, higher grade than we've been seeing at at uh, at Kenyatta Honda. So we're seeing also seeing some good thicknesses, so potential economic. Uh, grades and widths of mineralization. So that, that's uh, that's first of all, re really very encouraging on very early days in this this project. So we're hitting mineralization again and just in, in all of the holes we did last year and uh, may that continue this year as, as well. So, uh, but secondly, it's the size of the geophysics target. You know, it's we know this, the, that uh, gravity is a very effective tool in this part of the world. Uh, we've seen that not only the gravity uh, current, current science with some of the mineralization, but also some of the other geophysics tools that we're using. So um, we've only drilled the far eastern end of a, this two kilometer long gravity target. So so the, the second significant aspect to it is the size of the target and the potential for a, a potentially significant um, uh, ore body here. The third sort of bigger picture aspect of this is that um, these types of deposits tend to occur in clusters. So, yeah, the discovery at Kenyatta Honda is further validation of not only exploration tools, but of that, that concept. So, you know, that would form these, uh, part of a mining cluster, you know, uh, which is very typical of these types of uh, deposits, not only in the Iberian Pirate Belt, but uh, globally as well. So, so uh, yeah, you can imagine, so uh, La Romana times two, um, with Kenyatta Honda, and, and perhaps uh, we make another discovery of one of these many other targets. And yeah, so that's where we really start to uh, create significant uh, shareholder value uh, going forward. Great. And and uh, I guess, and this relates a little bit to sort of the fact that we found gold in, in uh, Kenyatta Honda, where we hadn't found gold uh, in the south at La Romana. Uh, but but what is the significance of the uh, the quartz vein uh, there? Because it, it, uh, one, one investor is asking, what is the significance of that thick quartz belt? Yeah, well, look, um, yeah, strong quartz uh, alteration, if you like, or the sort of veining is some, it's not uncommon in the the higher temperature, let's say, or stronger parts of an alteration system in a VMS uh, system. So it could be part of that. Uh, of course, at, at Kenyatta Honda, it's, 
uh, this is part of a sort of a thrust fault sequence. So we've got older rocks pushed over the top of of the the volcanic sequence that hosts most of the uh, the ore bodies in in the Iberian pirate belt. So it looks like we've got uh, this this zone of you know, perhaps um, uh, modified uh, deform um, volcanogenic massive sulfur related mineralization beneath this major thrust. So it could be a combination of both some of the early primary VMS volcanogenic massive sulfide uh, system with a with a uh, an overprint from the from this uh, major sort of thrust fault event. Which I, I would I take is is something that's um, looked at positively from from your perspective from a geological perspective. Yeah, that that's right. So uh, it 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 certainly well we'll have to see. It's very early days, of course. We don't want to we don't want to sort of uh, theorize too much uh, at, at this point. But uh, yes, look, it's uh, it's it's certainly a good indicator of a potential potential we're in a sort of a hot hot system and. And hence the perhaps the copper gold association that we're seeing, right? Yeah, which is fairly rare in the belt, at least in this kind of form. Um, well, gold, gold actually uh, is is uh, not unusual in the Iberian pirate belt. Um, it it does report to different concentrates. Tends to occur in a couple of different uh, metal associations. One is a, a, a copper gold association. Uh, sometimes with a bit of cobalt, a bit of business, and I should say we've been seeing some some uh, you know, quite anomalous, you know, elevated levels of cobalt at Kenyatta Honda. So yeah, you know, uh, it looks to be part of that sort of high temperature uh, metal association. But the other uh, way it can occur as well is which is more of a sort of a z lead zinc uh, silver arsenic association, you know, lower temperature, like uh, Asnacoya, which is just uh, you know about four, four kilometres to the east of, of this discovery. That's more zinc. Uh, but there is a bit of gold with that. Um, yeah. Does that answer that question? Sure. Yeah. So I guess, I guess uh, touching on the cobalt one, there was a, a question that we had in advance was, uh, you reported on cobalt at Kenyatta Honda and the results uh, yesterday. Um, is 0.09% cobalt really that significant? Um, and is it hard to recover? Yeah, well, look, you know, cobalt uh, is about seven to ten times uh, the price of copper uh, per ton. So, you know, it has potential, uh, yeah, you know, uh, potential economic interest for that reason. Uh, at this stage, we don't really know how the cobalt is occurring. Um, you know, sometimes it can be uh, difficult to extract. Uh, so we'll just, we haven't done any metallurgy or pet, uh, petrography and you know, looking at the the minerals under the microscope to see. See how the the cobalt's occurring, uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's for for further work. But uh, you know, at this stage, it is I think important just to at least uh, show that we are getting some some quite elevated levels of cobalt here. And if we can extract it, it could be uh, a, a nice addition to uh, to to a concentrate. So so a point a point zero nine percent cobalt would equivalent to what in copper then? Yeah, say point seven to. Uh, yeah, 0.9 percent copper, something like, something of that order. Okay, so for, so it's significant enough to make a difference if if it's there in in quantity. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Co-product or uh, oh, yeah, yeah, if it can report to a say a copper concentrate. Right. Uh, what is the planned hole spacing at Kenyatta Honda, and is this different than what was done at La Romana in the past three years, and why, if it's different? Yeah. Good. Good question. Um, yeah, the drilling we did uh, last year that reported the first uh, reported uh, four holes on one sort of pro long cross section on the eastern end of that big gravity anomaly, and uh, it's worth noting that uh, those drill holes uh, chased the mineralization from or showed it continued from surface again where there's an old mine working uh, to about 600 meters down dip. So uh, we really did some big step outs on on that uh, uh, early early of drilling. So. I think the last, the two deepest holes were something like 150 to 180 meters apart. Um, so that those are big steps in these types of deposits. And you uh, contrast that with the drilling we did at La Romana, where most of the drilling's down to about 200 meters depth. Uh, we've drilled it out on a say 50 by 50 meter pattern. So, you know, 180 meter step is a big step. So at this stage, most of the drilling at, at Kenyatta Honda is 
is, is wider spacing. Um, and it's been really a function of uh, drilling a variety of geophysics targets. So we've, been, we've tested some IP chargeability anomalies, IP resistivity targets, downhole conductor plates, uh, model uh, anomalies, and the gravity target. So, you know, we've shown uh, that, you know, certainly the, there's a strong coincident with the gravity anomaly, strong, the downhole EM seems to be very effective again, but also uh, in particular the IP resistivity seems to show some uh, correlation with the with the mineralization. So drill spacing is more a function of, of testing a variety of geophysics targets at this stage. Uh, the next uh, the, the next uh, drilling drill holes will be sort of further step outs, if you like. It's not we're not at an infield stage or anything like that, but looking to test further uh, along the, the, that big gravity anomaly, stepping out at sort of intervals of perhaps close to 100 metres thereabouts. Uh, probably no no certainly no closer than 50 metres from the nearest holes, but um, yeah, some again some further big step outs as we we look to see if this. Uh, this mineralization extends. Great. Um, uh, next question. Uh, how many new targets at Escasina do you expect to drill in 2024? Um, they, they then go on to ask, will Bravo be one of them? We already know that if we get access, I, I, I presume you would drill that, but um, but maybe you can speak more to that about the other targets and, and um, what expectations are. Yeah, look, um, I, I at this stage, obviously, we're conscious that last year was a very tough year for, for the junior mining companies, and we don't know what this year is going to bring. So we're going to be very uh, selective with where we drill, very conservative with our with our money. As I said, we, we, we've designed a plan to take us through to 2025. So that means we're going to have to be very you know, smart with, with our drill meters. Um, at this stage, we're, we're going to focus the drilling on, as I say, the two, two discoveries. Those are the lower risk, and they have the greatest uh, near-term uh, uh, you know, uh, economic potential, if you like. So, uh, we'd rather preserve drill meters for those two targets than test other targets just at, just at this at this uh, stage of the year. But let's let's see how the market changes through the year. If the sentiment starts to improve, or the copper price uh, starts to to really move. Um, and and that could be a, a a trigger for us to to start uh, getting more aggressive again on some of these other other targets. But in the meantime, you know, we're going to be you know, very steady, very select uh, with our drilling drill meters. Great. And I guess uh, last question that I had here from Advance and and from the the chat today. Um, uh, Bloomberg reported yesterday that Grupo Mexico may have approached First Quantum about acquisition of the Las Cruces mine. Uh, since uh, these are uh, close, both the Grupo project as well as as First Quantum's are close to where the Escasina project is. Uh, if Grupo is successful, what would the impact be on Pan Global? Yeah, well, I can't, uh, I can't personally comment on the on on. Uh... Uh, the how how real those rumors are, or you know uh, what what might might happen there. But look, uh, I think under uh, all scenarios, we're in a great position. You know, we're we're really uh, like a brownfields project. We're uh, you know, uh, Canal de Honda is what four kilometers away from from uh, Grupo Mexico's uh, project. Uh, we're La Romana's you know, sixty kilometers away. Uh, Las Cruces is what uh, twelve or fourteen kilometers from our property boundary. So. Yeah, we're really close to to uh, to uh, the project to uh, uh, Grupo's project and uh, and Las Cruces. So I think uh, I, as far as uh, Grupo Mexico uh, project, as most people will know, they they're looking to recommence mining with a with an under uh, an underground development beneath the Los Frailes open pit. Um, I think it's just waiting for one piece of the permitting. Uh, but otherwise, as far as we're aware, they're, they're sort of ready to commence construction on that uh, that development. So when that happens, that's that's clearly good news for us. Yeah, it could bring additional infrastructure. Um, certainly, uh, you know, with the nature of the mineralization that we've got, our location, uh, you know, I think uh, that puts us it gives us some further options uh, for the project going forward. Um, and likewise with Las Cruces. Yeah, they they completed the open pit and they've been sort of treating some of the low grade uh, stockpiles and so on, uh, uh, pending a decision uh, from their board to commit to the underground development. So whether it's 
uh, first quantum or whether it's uh, uh, some other uh, party that comes in, um, either of those uh, outcomes will, I think, is, can only be good for us. Again, it's just further development in the area. Uh, and we're we're within sort of easy trucking or conveyor belt distance of uh, both those new uh, development projects. Yeah, that's great. Well, yeah, it, it's great to be in a great neighborhood. That's uh, you know, th there's a lot of mines and a lot of a lot of um, exploration projects that are incredibly remote. Um, and and obviously, the fact that um, we even have any questions about about um, these kind of stories uh, tells you that you're in the right neighborhood. So, um, yeah, th thanks very much. That's that's all from my side. There's no more questions at this point. So uh, thank you very much to all our investors who've uh, participated and, and those who are potential investors. Hopefully you've you've learned more about the company and, um, and I leave it for Tim to to do the sign, -all, uh, sign off. Thank you. Yeah, look, uh, yeah, thanks again, everyone, for, uh, for joining us. Um, hopefully uh, you've shown that we've made some really good progress uh, last year. We still have an exciting program ahead of us. Uh, lots to look forward to uh, you know, in terms of uh, the delineation drilling at, on the western extension of La Romana, but also uh, the, you know, the exciting uh, 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 drilling to come on uh, the Kanyana Honda target. So uh, yeah, and hopefully we'll get to uh, you know, drill some of these other other targets in, in what is a really healthy uh, pipeline of new new targets where we have potential to make additional discoveries. So and as Jason said, uh, you know, we're in a great, a great location. This is uh this is not uh you know the high Andes or uh you know remote some remote area. Uh, this is this is uh this is a mining location with uh with plenty of infrastructure all around us. So all right. So yeah and, and should any of you have any questions at any time please feel feel free to shoot them through to us and uh, we'll endeavor to get back to you. So thanks everyone.